Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. At the end, the Spirit of the Lord says in the season, say yes to the will of the Lord. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love the Lord, you will keep the commandments of the Lord and give him a yes. Hello, 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 everybody. Hello. This is Sharita. Um, Prophetess Sharita Perry and I am here and I am doing a different kind of challenge. They have all kinds of challenges with um, food and they have all kinds of challenges that are all over the internet and these challenges vary from some strange things to some fun things to eating of some very hot things so I'm here tonight. I know we are going through a pandemic and I know that there are things that are going on and I know that there are people that are facing challenges out here tonight. So I was preparing um, a message. I was in homiletic mode, which means I was in a phase of writing uh, messages. A lot of times my messages sometimes do end up being compiled into books <clears throat> and things of that nature so that individuals can read them, find healing, deliverance, and restoration through them. But I'm not here for, about my books tonight. Um, I have actually watched God, the book, and the journal. And then I also have another book entitled a season of blessings a season of blessings a season of blessings is a good ministry tool um, it deals with the topics of obedience it deals with the topic of studying um, it deals with the topic of prayer and these are things that we need especially new believers and old saints that need to be brushed up on um, <clears throat> godly behaviors mannerisms so that we can get sanctified so that we can um i have second chronicles i wrote this book my grandfather is a baptist pastor and i wrote this book back um years ago before he passed away or i don't know it was before he passed away or right after he passed away and i think that was in 2015 and um when i wrote this book um as i was doing it I was just like, okay, Lord, I have a whole lot of titles, so I have a whole lot of outlines that I am taking time uh, in my spare time. Well, not in my spare time, but I'm making time to fill in the gaps. There are some days where I just plug away, plug away, plug away. Then I start writing, so I have like half of this book, half of that book, part of this book, part of that book. So I'm trying to get everything done, but this particular book is it has second chronicles 7 14 if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and uh and turn from their wicked ways i will hear from heaven i will forgive their sins and i will heal the land i firmly believe if people will start to transform their hearts back to a godly nature and a godly mannerism that we wouldn't be worried about a COVID-19 vaccination and that the cdc would say miraculously miraculously this doctor from wherever the place may be my holy spirit actually spoke the word new york while i was saying this so i don't know if people if if they would start pushing a repent for the cure maybe god would actually give a doctor the cure for this vaccine just because i am a christian just because i believe in um god does not mean that i don't believe in modern medicine natural medicine and things of that nature because it just is what it is and it's a reality that you know sometimes you know we have to go to the doctor and sometimes we have got to you know if i i i, I fractured my wrist without a doctor i would not have been able to use my hand again because the bone went through my whole entire wrist 
and I had to have a surgery. I have an incision from here to here and I still have the scars on my wrist and it's going lengthwise. And so without morphine, without modern medicine and I thank God I cry when I see my doctor um, his name is Matthew Levy and when I see him I cry sometimes because I'm just like you know without him I would not have the usage of my limbs I would not have been able to um, I was a hairstylist for many years I would not have been able to use my arms to do the things that I love to do the most so I'm grateful I'm thankful and I appreciate modern medicine so I had to get that out of the way but I'm going to get into um, the 23rd Psalms and the 23rd Psalms challenge it just goes as simple as this I'm challenging a lot of people I'm challenging everybody across the world, adults, children, anyone. Get your Bibles, read the 23rd Psalms. The 23rd Psalm says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me by, besides the still water. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in a path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table for me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Why did I choose the 23rd Psalms? The Lord is my shepherd, and I shall not want. During this time of pan the pandemic, I chose the, the Holy Spirit chose the 23rd Psalms because there are people that lack and they need things. They need companionship. They need food. They need um, conversation. They need employment. They need love. The children, the children need the most. So uh, a lot of times um, I, I fast and I pray a lot. And I, pr I pray, I cried so hard the other week. Um, I heard a s bad situation regarding some children. So I have a heart of compassion. I do. And when it comes down to kids, that's where my heart aches the most. I told my mother I may never get married. In two or three years, I may plan to position myself so that I can actually just be a foster mother. Um, and I'll talk about that at another time, but I believe that loving on kids for the rest of my life may be my ministry and I will be happy with that. You know, so you've got to find your peaceful place, your happy medium and what works for you and loving on kids will work for me. So, um, he restoreth my soul. God is a God of restoration. Anybody that is broken, anybody that is dealing with anything, a bad husband, a bad relationship, if you're in a situation and you're in a predicament where your spouse or your significant other is verbally, physically, mentally, emotionally abusive, I'm going to challenge you to pray. Just to ask God. If you don't know what to ask God, say, Lord, fix it. Just tell God exactly what it is. When you get up in the morning, if that person is in the house with you, you go in the bathroom, you hit the shower, and you get some praise and some worship time in your own personal time. You close that door, you lock that door, you hit that shower, and when you get in that shower to clean up your, out, your exterior, you get to working with God and say, Lord, Fix my children. Lord, fix my husband. Lord, fix their grace. Lord, I repent for this. I repent for that. Lord, fix it. Lord, help me. Lord, come down. Lord, bring some mercy. Lord, bring some grace. So we're going to pray this thing out for a month so that God can restore our souls. And it says not for, he's not even going to restore our souls and restore us for us, but because he loves us and we are his creation. The reason why plagues, pandemics, and bad things happen is because of a plethora, an overflow, and an abundance of sin and if you watch say yes with Sharita you will f and, and watch the matters of the heart you'll learn a little bit about why things like the pandemic transpires because I literally discuss this is what they did this is what happened and this is how we got to this place so 
it's not about preparing a table in the presence of our enemies because we're going to bless those who curse us and we're going to love those that spitefully you uh uses us and say all matters of evil against us we're going to pray for them we're going to ask god to forgive them now i'm not telling you to go and be friends with them again now, i'm not telling you to be um not so smart i don't want to call anybody stupid but you i'm not telling anybody to go back to a toxic friendship toxic relationship toxic group of family members because if they're covetous hateful if they step on your toes and stab you in your back one time you can forgive them but no to never let them get behind your back again you know what i'm saying once you get the daggers out your back so i'm just here to say just practice love forgiveness prayer intercessory prayer pray for your problems ask god to fix it and say lord if there's anything that is in me that needs to be fixed if there's something in me take it out lord created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me so that we can go from a point in life where regardless of whether you've got a little bit in your cup or a lot in your cup but we can get to a point where after saying this uh psalms 23 for 30 days i pray that it becomes a habit and a habit as such to the point where the bible says my word goes forth to out to accomplish that where i send it and does not return to me void so you're gonna say the 23rd psalms and you're gonna go ha from having a few drops in your cup it says um in 23 and 5 it says and my cup runneth over and my cup runneth over and my cup runneth over let's say that five times and my cup runneth over 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 and we gonna jump back up and say and he restores my soul 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 so right now in the name of Jesus I pray and I prophesy that God will start to fill your cups hallelujah somebody I prophesy in the name of Jesus that your little bit will turn into more and more and more and more until your cup runneth over i pray in the name of jesus and i prophesy that god right now in the name of jesus that he comes into your house that he restores you mentally physically emotionally every crooked way that is in you i prophesy right now that god will start to mend your hearts and your minds and your spirits and he will begin to do a new thing thing in you in the name of jesus we not even were it says surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord forever but i'm here to tell you that god is going to restore it god is going to fix it god is going to heal it god is going to deliver it i'm just here to tell you right now in the name of jesus read the 23rd psalms every single solitary day and after you read the 23rd psalms i want you to get a pen and a paper and i want you to maybe go to the dollar tree or the dollar store and get you a, a little uh, monthly planner and start from in the month of or i have a watch god journal and the Watch God Journal is a 100-page journal, and it is on Amazon. So you can get you a journal or you can get you a planner, whichever type of personality you are, a journaler or a planner. So what you do is you write down these five words. Write down the word obedience. Hallelujah, somebody. Write down the word faith. Hallelujah, somebody. Write down the word love. And you write down the word prayer. The first thing with obedience 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 is the key to your blessings obedience is the key to healing deliverance restoration um protection and obedience is the key to 
opening up the windows, the doors, and the gates of heaven. Hallelujah. To bless you with all of those things that you desire. See, I don't have to prophesy a house or a car to you. I don't have to prophesy a career to you. I don't have to prophesy those things to you. No. God says, restore your heart and turn your heart to God and you can delight in him and he will give you the desires of your heart. Hallelujah, somebody. So obedience is the key to your happiness. Obedience is the key. Obedience to God. Obedience to God and the word of God is the key to your joy. Obedience is the key to your financial security. Obedience is the key to everything that you could possibly want in your life. Obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah and hallelujah. Faith. The Bible says faith is the substance of things that are hoped for and evidence of things unseen. Faith. 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 With faith, you can go to the mountains and tell the mountains to be thou removed. Whatever the problem is, you've got to get out of my way in the name of Jesus right now because the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. So you've got to get out of my way because God is restoring my soul right. And he is leading me on the path of righteousness for his name's sake because I am an obedient vessel unto him. Hallelujah. Because it's not by power nor by might, but by my spirit. So I'm here to tell you without faith. Number two is faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the third thing is love. Love is the greatest commandment. So God says, guess what? Reciprocity. If you love on me, hallelujah, somebody, I will love on you. If you're obedient to me, hallelujah, I'm obedient to you. Hallelujah. If you're faithful to me, hallelujah, I am faithful to you. But the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son and whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Hello, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. We're about to get our blessings in the name of Jesus because the Lord is my shepherd. Hallelujah. And I shall not want. See, everybody is not looking for material blessings. Hallelujah, somebody. Somebody needs uh, some peace of mind. Hallelujah. And the peace of God which passes all understanding who keep, for those who keep their minds and their hearts stay through Christ Jesus. So God will restore your just in franchise and your discombobulated mindset, your frazzled brain, God will con uh, conform and restore everything going on in your life. I'm here to tell you Psalms 23 for the next 30 days. Let Psalms 23 bless your soul, bless your mind, bless your body, bless your spirit, and bless your house. Hallelujah. And the third thing after we give God love, because see, the, the greatest commandment through Jesus Christ is to love. Love God which is in heaven. Love our neighbors and then love ourselves. We've got to love reciprocity. I'm putting out love and love is coming back to me because whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. So I'm sowing love, hallelujah somebody, in the name of Jesus. I'm sowing peace in the name of Jesus. I'm sowing seeds of faith, hallelujah somebody, because I'm reaping what I sow. So I'm sowing, hallelujah somebody, seeds of obedience and God is going to be obedient back to you. I'm sowing seeds of faithfulness to God because God is going to in return be faithful back to me. I'm sowing seeds of love to my God because my God is going to give me reciprocity. He is going to, he said, whatsoever man soweth, so shall he reap. So he is going to give you love, joy, peace. He's going to be obedient to you. He's going to be protecting you, blessing you, giving the angels charge over you. He's going to be restoring you and he's going to be filling up your cup. So I'm here to tell you the last component is prayer. Add a little prayer, worship, and prayer. Praise. Hallelujah, somebody. And you've got a blessed life. Hallelujah, somebody. The keys to the kingdom. God's and the Holy Spirit is saying access granted to everything that you want in life. So I prophesy restoration in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, somebody. I prophesy love, joy, and peace. Hallelujah, somebody. I prophesy in the name of Jesus that your cup is going from just a few drops. Hallelujah. From just enough. Hallelujah to more than enough to the point where your cup runneth 
over. Hallelujah. So let's say that one more time. My cup runneth over. See, my cup don't always have to run over with material things. My cup runs over with joy. Hallelujah, somebody. My cup is running over with peace. Hallelujah, somebody. My cup is running over with favor from God. Hallelujah. Because I'm obedient. Hallelujah. I have faith in him. Hallelujah. And that I am walking in love. And because I give him pray, praise and worship, hallelujah, somebody, I'm always in peace. I've always got joy. I've always got happiness. Hallelujah, somebody. So as I close out tonight, I'm going to use my favorite slogan because I have a show that is entitled Say Yes with Sharita. If you say yes to the Lord, he will say yes to you. Remember that God loves you and I love you too. So I'm here to tell you, read the 23rd Psalms and look at yourself and prophesy that every area of your life that needs to be restored will be restored in the name of Jesus because he said he's going to pour his spirit upon all flesh. So I'm here to tell you to speak life into your home, into your children, into your relationships, into your finances, into your emotional stability. Hallelujah, somebody. I have got to get out of here because I'm going to have church. Hallelujah. All by myself up in this place. Hallelujah. I'm about to go prophesy to myself a little bit. I'm about to prophesy a little bit of happiness in my life. Hey, I thank you, Jesus. I'm going to prophesy some protection on my day tomorrow. Hallelujah. Because I don't know what the devil might try to try me because the Bible said the devil is seeking to and fro in and out of the earth. See, in whom he can devour, but the Lord is telling me uh, that battle just got canceled in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, because I done gave the angels charge over my situation, and they done went forward. Hallelujah, and they done already fixed that thing, so it, it's nothing but goodness and mercy that is coming to me. There ain't nothing but goodness and mercy coming at me. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Telephone and tell a friend, get all of your family Family members, all of your friends, get your children in the 23rd Psalm Challenge right now. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in good health, even as thy soul prospers. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope. At the end, the Spirit of the Lord says in the season, say yes to the will of the Lord. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. If you love the Lord, you will keep the commandments of the Lord.